Good morning, everybody. What's going on? How are you guys? <clears throat> we uh, are interrupting your previously... watched channel of hazardous arts playing some awesome video games what's up guys <clears throat> um today i think we're going to uh forego the troll and mix it up a little bit and then we're going to come back to this guy and start working on his face a little bit more that is what we're going to do today we'll take a little break a little break from the troll. Figure we can do some nice face work today. Change it up a little bit. We'll work on this beautiful man's face. Look how beautiful he is. So good. <laughs> What's up, Joette? How you doing? Oh, what's up, Patrice? How are you? We are a classroom. Looking for your work on your model. Oh, no pressure then. Holy crap. <laughs> In that case, good morning, class. Hello. Um, this is a little quick project on, uh, or a little update on this guy. Uh, this is a Horizon Zero Dawn um, fan art that I've been working on for quite a while. Um, high res is pretty much done. Um, I've actually gotten this guy all the way through... Um, just before finished baking, but, uh, before I finish baking the head and everything, I really want to go back and, and fix up, uh, his head, bring it up to speed, because we, it's not, it's not up to speed at the moment. So that's this guy, Horizon Zero Dawn, here's the, uh, the concept. Concept is from Adrian. Oh God, what is his name? I forgot his name already. Uh, but if you just look up Horizon Zero Dawn um, on our station, you can check him out. But what we're doing today is, yeah, what's up, Pro Side? How you guys doing? Adriaxia, Aridaxia, yeah, and hi. Um, we are going to be doing this guy. All right, so I looked looked for lots of reference for this guy. If we did, if we look at his face, um, I came up with a couple of actors that uh, I felt was close to this. And one of them is Mr. Galifianakis himself. Here's a couple different versions of him. But I feel he is pretty close. It's pretty, pretty close. I think the eye's a little bit wider on him. Uh, how many times did you do that for Mr. Are you talking about how much time did it take to do this, Patrice? Um, he's probably about, um, uh, I'd say two to two and a half weeks of high-res work, probably, for that guy. Um, and the other is Ron Swanson. I feel like he could also work well for this guy. So I'm looking at, um the eye structures in particular today, the sockets and um, zygomatic area is what I'm going to focus on today. We're going to look at this guy. I'm pretty much taking a lot of uh, the reference straight from this. Uh, Sa, so this is uh, ZBrush. The Pixelogic ZBrush. Um, so this image in particular I'm taking a lot of um, reference from but also I'm gonna be calling this one and this one quite a bit so I'll just throw those off to the side here this is another one for Zach but it's a little bit more blurry 
But this one has some really cool things happening in the outer lids here and here. So usually when I when I end up picking picking an, an actor, I'll get um, you know for a particular set of features. So let's say in this particular one, um, I want to take Zach's eyes, but you know I may want to come in and do um, Mr. Swanson's nose, or you know maybe his. I really like his mustache in this, and then I'll take specifically from that. So it's really good. Or you know the um, the f actually these folds feel a lot better. He's just got one main one that feels a little bit weird when you're trying to sculpt that. But he's got some nice staggered ones up here. But you know, he he may have a better furrow folds than Zach may. So I may take the furrow and the nose and the nasolabial folds and then do the eyes and brows and forehead from this guy. Um this particular one is not going to be 3D print. Um, this one is actually for video game production. So I will... What I'll do real quick, actually, is I'll... I'm going to launch my Marmoset real quick. And I'll... In the background, we'll load up how far I've taken this guy. Um, so most of the... Most of the baking is already done. So I created the low res, I created the UVs, um, and all the groupings and all that stuff, um, and did most of the bakes. So I'll show you that here in a second as soon as that loads up. But I've gotten to the point where I'm, I'm ready to bake the face, and I'm like, you know what? Like The high res just really needs a whole lot more love. So that's what we're going to do, is we're going to get in... So you can already see some of the stuff I just do see through. No, that's not gonna work right now. Let's do this. So a lot of times what I like doing is I like grabbing grabbing an image and I love using this see through transparency. So really quickly Hi, <laughs> what's up side? Yeah, that is this is my ultimate nerd hat. A uh, World of Warcraft hat. It's beautiful, isn't it? In all its nerd glory. So, anyways, yeah, I'll use the uh, the see-through quite a bit, and just kind of like look. I can even actually come in and do some comparisons here. I didn't know this for a long time but you can actually spin your model. It's actually fairly close. I have not done this one yet. <laughs> I have not done this yet for this guy. Let's get pretty close. Um, I didn't know this for the navigation for a long time. Okay, I've been using ZBrush for a long time, but I, the, for the navigation to spin like this is if you hold down Shift and you click and move, and you're still moving and then you let go of shift if you go right to left it'll actually spin your model like this I didn't know that for the longest time <laughs> alright alright here I think uh, the marmoset is up now yeah here you go so this is how far I've gotten on all the bakes um, if we come in here and show you wireframe, that's the wireframe. So the bakes feel pretty good. All that is lovely. Uh, so Martin said, is what you use to put in the shaders. Uh, technically, yes, because the shaders are in your actual materials in here um, but I'll use I'll, after this is all done um, I'll go into substance painter and paint all of the uh, textures but technically these are uh, the actual materials because they they house the different um, features in the material 
So yeah. So I got you can see I got to the point where uh, I'm ready to bake this guy, but I'm like, you know what? Now's the time. I, I need to go back and really do his face some justice here. So that's how we got back to this guy. This guy. Is there a way to close a curved brush like a circle? Yeah. Well, to close it? Not really, but you can have it meet up in a circle if you want. Um, that's what I did for... Uh, let me show you real quick. Um, the ropes on the troll? Let me load up the troll real quick and I'll show you. The troll. The great troll. Whoa, crotch shot. So this is what I did for these ropes. It's really, really, really easy. Um, so let's let's grab this guy real quick. Um, let's go grab a, a brush. In this case, I have a an actual rope brush that I use um, which I picked up from Bad King you can go badking.com.au and grab this brush so basically when you draw on here it's uh, just a curve right it has a, a beginning and an end but if you draw and if you hold down shift, right, you get this nice uh, straight line. If you're holding down shift and you continue to hold shift and you drag off of the model, it will create that full circle for you. Like that. So, yes, it does connect the, the, um, <clears throat> the spline, but it doesn't actually m weld the model together. Like that. So, um, click and drag. Hold down shift. Keep holding down shift. Come off of the model. Still holding shift and then let go. And that should create a full circle around the geo. Alright. Don't crash. Thank you. There's my pen. All right. <clears throat> so you can see I already started kind of blocking out some of this, some of these big shapes here. Let's, I'm going to grab my, this dude and bring him off over here. I mean, if you get, if you get a really good photo, it, look how much guesswork it takes out of what you're doing. There's so much fantastic information right here. Look at all this little, sh sh look at all these X's. Look at all these. Sh 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 yeah, that's what we're doing. All right, I think I'm gonna I'm gonna try to focus on. Let's focus on the eye bags first, these areas. I really need to come back and, and fix the upper eyelids. Right now they're the mass of how this is reacting with the um, the corner of the brow and the eyelid doesn't feel right. So I need to I need to do that after I start doing the um, the eye bags here. Well there's really no other way <clears throat> To get all this stuff, other than just jumping in, Let's make sure all my layers are on. Okay, that's that layer. Let's continue on this layer. Sol, what's up, buddy? How are you? Long time, man. Arivia, how are you? Okay. So 
we're just going to get in yeah a very long time it has been a long time dude how you been Good to see you're uh, you're still alive out in the world, though. I'm gonna try to get some of this nice crossing action happening, where we got pieces coming this way, and then pieces coming this way. New job, new band. Man, he was all over the place. I'm just going to break up some of these shapes in here. times we got some really fine lines moving this way just that a nice little hint of uh, surface value there tree won the fight against your car oh usually trees will win depending on the car that you're driving, I think. If I can get some of this nice little... Ooh, not that one. What's us, V? How you doing, bud? Siba? Siba. That's the way you say it, I think. Saplings are weak as... Uh, yeah. Yeah, don't Sonny Bono it, though, man. It's one thing to be surrounded by sheet metal and framework, but when you're snowboarding and running into trees, that's no good, man. That's no good. So we're going to be careful that I don't go super crazy. <clears throat> Man, my voice. My voice this morning. Because <clears throat> I still want to be able to rely on some nice uh, pore details. Um, so I really want to stick to some of the major pieces and not go into this the too many pore style details. So this one, we're looking here. I'm looking right here where we've got this one major fold that comes over here like this. The line that comes in here. But inside of it, I have like these nice kickbacks the other way coming in from this next line. Let's see if I can grab that. So let's get an idea of where I'm at. So here's my large fold. And then we get some kickbacks coming back this way. I'm glad you're okay though, pro.
Um, so a little bit of uh, my experience. Uh, Steve is asking if uh, I learned from art school or on my own. Um, it was for me. It was both. Um, I started my formal education back in two thousand. Two thousand. Yeah. <clears throat> Went to junior college for a couple of years doing like Photoshop and painter um, classes. And then uh, I found a college that provided um, a full bachelor's degree for video imaging um, or 3D, 3D art. Let's hit some in flight right here so we can get some depth going. A little bit better depth. I use a inflate quite a bit. When I, I don't want to mess up the surface, but I just want to get a little bit of depth happening. So some, some areas I'll push in a little bit more. Other areas I'll, I'll pull out. And it will retain the surface information. I just want to make sure that you're looking at this from up close and far away. Making sure those, those uh, shadow pieces are the shadow areas are reading I think what we need to do is we need to push this in a little bit more and push that in You really want to get this continual line, but I think it's feeling a little too straight. Let's undo a little bit of that. There you go. Um, so yeah, I found a college that, get, that did a full bachelor's degree in video game art. So I spent uh, four years there and graduated in 2007. Um, I didn't particularly care for where the, where the game industry was at the time in 2007. So I went into um, uh, medical and dental uh, modeling. So I, I actually worked on skulls in reconstructive surgery, um, uh, the study of the skull uh, and growth patterns. Um, including dentition movement for orthodontists, uh, oral surgeons, reconstructive surgery, um, that kind of stuff. So I spent all, about four or five years um, working and studying the, the human skull. That was a lot of fun, but um, I went to my first BlizzCon actually back in 2013, and that was when I was like, you know what, I got I to gotta get back into games. That's where my true, that's where my love is. I love <laughs> What's up, Jacob? I know that you want to you want to finish my story, dude. <laughs> um. So yeah, so um, when I got back in in 2013, uh, the the industry had pretty much completely changed between 2007 and 2013. So I had to go back and uh, reteach myself pretty much the whole pipeline and all the new softwares. Um, so it's a little bit of both. I had traditional background, um, but then had to relearn everything myself when I got back into the industry. <laughs> How you doing, Jacob? <laughs> Alright, so now I, I think, I think this one's fairly close in just kind of the major shapes that, um, I think I'll work with alphas next to try to get this to the next level so I'm gonna try and um, do the same things to this side and we'll bring it up to to that level right now it's just what I what I usually do to start this out is just go in and map some of the large pieces and shapes and then from there go in It's always a little bit easier to 
get the main shapes down first before you get into the gritty details. So we got okay, we got one major one that comes here. We got another that comes here. And then we've got a mass that comes So a major shape that comes in here, and then all of this is a secondary form. to this one here. All right, and then it kind of ends here. This comes in a little bit. And this is the pretty much the end of the the bag as it turns around here. So I want a nice plane break in between this and this. All right, so we get this made kind of larger break here. I want to make sure I get that break in there. It's kind of the, the eye, the bottom of the eye. You can think of it like cupping basically the, the bottom side of your eyeball. <laughs> Do I have to touch a lot of eyes to get this good? <clears throat> no, but you have to stare at eyes. I I highly suggest that if you have a significant other, that you ask permission to to use them as reference every once in a while. Because staring at pictures is one thing, but like literally actually staring at the real thing, like super close, um, is a whole nother fistful of information that you don't necessarily get by looking at um, pictures. I th that's why I say a significant other, though. One that doesn't mind you being that close to their face because it can get really uncomfortable. Even with... I was talking with my wife last night and I was like, oh, like, I was looking at, like, you know, her, like, the skin, like, the skin values and, like, the, the micro bumps, uh... And like how the the eyes are, and like are they you know is it bags? Do you see the the zygomatic um, nasolabial separation? Like those types of things. She's like, okay, I think you can get away from me now <laughs> after a little while. But it really it really is uh, beneficial to to actually sit and look at the real thing if you have the chance if you have somebody that doesn't mind you being that close to their face I highly suggest it yeah don't stare at strangers in the street though you can go back you can get punched in the face or something like that you know so just be careful I'm going to lighten this up a little bit. We're going to pull this in, in here. So this one, I'm looking at this this shape here. It's the, kind of the end of the eyelid where the crunkle sits. Um, a lot of times this stands out, but you have to be careful that um, you don't, that you're looking at the difference between the actual shape um, and the color right because like in here we don't see a ton of shape of course everything's in shadow in here but you do see a lot of color hue shift going on so this is a, like a little bit more yellow uh, than the uh, the greens and blues and purples that go in in here so you want to be really careful when you're actually sculpting that you're not sculpting in um, color value differences right you don't want to let your eye go oh there's a big difference here and sculpt in a huge 
change when it's actually a change in color values and not a change in sculptural value or depth. She's really disappointed when I say I want to study your anatomy that I actually mean it. <laughs> Just lean in, look intently to their eyes, and tell them you love how wrinkly they are. <laughs> yeah. 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 Even if you if you if you say like, oh, like you got some really cool blah blah blah. Like this this fold is really cool, like you still gotta be really careful. Still got to be really careful. So I do want to have some structural differences for this shape around the cronkle. Um, nothing too crazy drastic though. So I would like the structure to support um, the value, the um, the tonal shifts and the um, value shifts, or the um, color shifts. Any tips to be motivated in work? I think um, I I have basically one major tip that I use uh, to keep myself motivated, and it's it's worked really well for me personally um, over the last Jesus, I don't know how many years. Um, and that is a simple, it's a very, very simple equation. Um, and that is, uh, discipline is greater than motivation. Discipline is greater than motivation. I actually had that on a, a sticky note on my monitor for many years. Discipline is greater than motivation. Mostly because motivation, you kind of have to be, you know, it's a, a deus ex moment where you're like, I feel motivated to, you know, randomly feel motivated to do some art. And then, like, you get in, you do some art, and it kind of sucks. And you're like, I'm not motivated anymore. Whereas discipline, if you look at all the <clears throat> greats uh, in the world, all the, the amazing people at doing their job, whether it's an artist, whether it's... Um, uh, an athlete, somebody who's working at the top of their game, they they drill every single day. They don't sit and wait for, oh, I feel like going out and throwing some footballs. No, you get out there and you actually throw them, you drill them, you force yourself to do it. People that are in super good shape, they don't feel motivated to go to the gym all the time. You know, They're like, no, I, I have to do this. Because it's the ultimate goal is what I want, and I know it's going to take a, quite a while to get there. So every day you do it, all the time. Doesn't matter if you're motivated to do it or not, you do it. And it's the same thing with art for me. Is just sit down and start, you know, and then once you start getting into a uh, kind of a rhythm. Your motivation will come after your discipline has been initiated, you know? So that's what that that's what keeps me going too. And I think the the one other thing is um, every day I'm not working on the things that I want to work on, somebody else is getting better. <laughs> now that one's, that one you have to be careful with because that can, um, that can kind of come back to bite you. You gotta be careful with that one. But that one has kept me going quite a bit as well. Let's see if I can get some of this kind of crossing action happening. This may totally not work. 
But that's that's what I use all the time. Is discipline is greater than inspiration. I don't think I don't feel like that's gonna work. I may wait for alphas for that little area. So now I'm gonna try to get just some of these small little ones. Coming back that way. I know, right? Uh, so, I've I've tried Mudbox a couple of times, um, and it has it has some cool tools, uh, but it in the sculpting and the pipeline work, uh, it, it for me it just doesn't even compare. Like the it, putting Mudbox and ZBrush into the same sentences, there's really no comparison when it comes down to sculpting and um, level of detail that you can get into and all of the different crazy amazing tools that you get in ZBrush like it's just it's not in the same conversation for me I'll try to soften up some of these edges a little bit Okay. Um, if you don't want to get into the full uh, $800 version of ZBrush, there is a ZBrush Core, which has a lot of the um, the core features um, for for less. So I would I would look into ZBrush Core. Let's see if I can nail some of this this cool cross hatching that's here. Yeah, this we got like a little line that comes in here, like these guys that come in this way. And then we got a couple little ones that come in this way. So basically, little cross hatches. X's. Yeah, man, no problem. What's up, Wilford? How you doing? So, we got a lot of them that kind of come in this way. <laughs> Don't do crack mats expensive unless you go for street quality. <laughs> Crack's bad for you, bro. Stay away from the crack. That, I mean... I mean, we all we all get it. We're students. A lot a lot of people are students, and you know, may not be able to afford it. But really, it's it's kind of you know, if if you do have the chance, it's best to support the companies that um, that are giving you the tools to make awesome stuff. You know what I mean? Like, um, you know, Marmoset is a, a s amazing rendering tool for game engine stuff. Um, Substance uh, is amazing for texturing for all my game art stuff. I want to support those guys. I want to give them uh, the support in order for them to give me better tools, you know?
Let's see if that's even. Is that even a thing? I really, I don't really like that. Maybe we'll just. So a lot of times when you're when you're doing these processes, you don't. You've never you've never done this dude's eye before, you know. So it's all, it's all about trying to figure out what works and what doesn't work, you know. It's it's problem solving. So if something doesn't work, then you're back to the drawing board or you try something else. Or you just give up completely and go cry and play video games. And say I suck as an artist. That's you, that's sometimes what I do. <laughs> Why am I even doing this? You know, if you're if you're doing this this type of work too, and you know, some days you just you don't, you know, you're not, you're not in the zone. And you, you do the whole, <clears throat> well, discipline. Brendan said discipline is greater than inspiration, so I'm going to keep going. And then you just kind of keep sucking. <laughs> Sometimes it's good to just get up and walk away for a little while. Or like maybe work on a different project. Uh, use damn standard to add wrinkles all over the face uh, as to define the skin, but that was not enough. Is there any alpha or brush where I'll be able to add skin pores? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Um, usually, what I do for for skin pores is um, let me let's save this real quick. Save it. Do, 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 do. Ooh, this file is up to two gigs. Nice. 118 sub tools, 68 million. 68 million, that's actually not bad. What really um, drives up the memory space is your layers. Basically, each layer is whatever this is duped by one, by two, by three, by four. Actually, it's by two. By three, four, five, six, seven. <clears throat> um, so let's add an eighth. Usually what I do is I'll use a displace. And then I'll use... Um, it's kind of a, a mix between a lot of different passes. But if you use a displace and spray. And like a small, maybe like alpha... We made that a little big. Let's turn that down. You can start getting some really cool micro details with the spray. Um, maybe we'll turn that up, turn that to sub. You know, so if you go through with a couple of different pore passes. What I would do is it was study um, the pore passes and then just try a couple of different ways of doing it. You know, like a lot of times we'll have um, big pores up here in the cheek area. Which I think this is a little, it's a little too randomized up here right now. I actually find that the pores are, are fairly evenly spaced out. We can do that. And then, um, so I would use displace with a spray and then play with some alphas. You can even go in and do kind of just little skin breakups like that too. And come in and do, you know, adding some, some nice subtle surface variation to it is, um, is also another good pass and then you can the one I did for quite a while was uh, I used displace um, with this alpha and then I bring my shift all the way down and then my intensity way down and you can come in and just add this really really subtle surface noise 
just to break up some of that. Right? You see how that just some nice subtlety to it and adds a little bit of grit to it. See that? And I would do that across pretty much everything. And then maybe go do your pour pass. And then I would I would probably put all these on layers as well. So then maybe you can So that's another layer that you can do. Um, you can also do, if you want to get kind of even more gritty, you can use a different um, alpha. But this one's pretty cool if you um, use negative 100 focal shift. Just adds that nice. surface variation um ranchero says which character is this one this was the uh, the horizon zero dawn character that um that was the character before the troll that i was working on but right now we're we're doing some facial details we'll give the troll a little break so we can do that um the other one that you can do is uh let's go back to like a 47. Turn that back up. So I'll, I usually turn it up quite a bit to see what it's actually doing. Um, let's do something closer to and you can, you know, if let's say you use displace and alpha four, you know, instead of doing that like the pores, you can actually add slight variation. So like that's really good for um, the neck down here. So a lot of times, let's say we turn that down to like eight. A lot of times you'll have like the larger hair follicles down here, so you can get that and then mix that with some of the smaller things so there's all kinds of ways to do it what I would just I would do is I would I would start with displace and spray and test out some different alphas and then go between um, doing large pores smaller pores um, and then the the actual surface variation stuff so like maybe we'll just ever so gingerly and you can even do more because a lot of times your um, face will have like these these small little blemishes you'd be amazed how um, how much the the surface of your skin actually has a lot of peaks and valleys and different size shapes all right, so you start combining those things on top of each other, and eventually you start getting somewhere close to what skin is. Or you can go and do um, X, Y, Z with Mari. Either way. There you go. What's my annual salary? Uh, too much for you to afford. <laughs> uh, I mean, I, that's that's pretty personal. I wouldn't I wouldn't talk about that. Uh, my my actual um, salary on on stream. It's a little bit. It's a little personal. All right. Uh, I think what I'm gonna do is. Let's continue. Yep. Yep. So let's delete this guy. Let's go back to our lair here. Uh, after you're done with the character and you want to make it a game-ready asset, how do you deal with 
the cloth or is it combined with low poly and normal map um, I'll actually show you exactly what I did so here's the final and then this is the low res come on turn baby so you'll see this is one let's just look at the wireframe here all right so this is this is one piece these are these are all one piece this is another this one's another this one's another this one's another and then you just take and bake those together all right so same thing so this is all one this is one this is one this is different same thing with this stuff so this is different this is different so all those are, are um, baked separately with these little pieces and this piece and this piece So that's how you end up getting um, a high res like that. <clears throat> um, what's up, Annie? Uh, Mari or Substance Painter, and why? I think I think you should use the one that fits the task best for whatever you're trying to do. Um, for me, if I'm doing um, super high res. Uh, uh oh, I'm starting to get errors. Look at that. That's beautiful. Let's save real quick and reload. Nope, not load. Um, I think it really so give me a second I'll talk about salary. I'll give a little a little a little talk about it. Let's save this first before he dies. Yeah, um, it you know it really depends on where you're at in the world versus uh, you know what your what your actual cost of living is. Whew. that's a good one. Look at that. Yeah, buddy. All right, all I'm gonna do is I'm gonna um, I'm gonna kill Marmoset. This is taking up a lot of my memory. And then let's kill this. There we go. Um, doo -doo 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 -doo. Tim the Ancient, what's up, man? So, oh wait, let's talk about Mari versus Substance Painter. So if I'm doing um, uh, high res projections, I'll do Mari. Um, but if I am doing material work, then I'll definitely use painter. Let's load this guy back up. Dun, 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 dun. This guy's poly count generally representative. Is this guy's poly count generally representative of game characters now? Yeah, I mean you can get you can get pretty high in AAA games these days, in realistic ones. So um, I would say try to keep it to about a hundred thousand tries. Probably pretty good, but you're talking, you know, you're talking hair cards. You're talking a uh, uh, high res face for uh, blend shape support uh, on top of the outfit. So I mean, you, you end up getting quite a bit up there. So in the low poly, would you end up merging them into one asset and one material? Or would you leave them as multiple meshes and textures and materials? Um, it would end up being multiple materials for sure, uh, because one material wouldn't be able to handle all the different types of um, 
like skin. Skin is a, an incredibly different material than a, like a, a an outfit material that can be leather or metal or or that kind of stuff. So um, definitely will be more than one material for sure. Um, if you're talking texture sets, which is like one UV space and one set of maps, um, then it, for for this high res of characters, I usually probably have between... Oh man, that's tough to say. Depend, it's depending on your engine, but for Unreal, I would probably have between three and six texture sets. Meaning... One texture set is, you know, your diffuse, your normal, your metal, your roughness, your, you know, subsurface scattering, your whatever that, whatever that is, whatever maps that you use in that set. I'll probably have have at least three to six of those sets, all depending on how I set up my UVs and everything. So I'm just trying to catch up with the questions here real quick. Oh, you did mean texture sets. Okay, cool. Yeah. So I would probably... It's this guy right now, um, because he's mostly just for my portfolio, I think I have seven texture sets on him. All right, let's see where my layers are. Okay, we're recording on that guy. Okay, here's here's another little bug that happens sometimes where I I don't get this a lot from other people that it happens to, but it happens to me all the time it, where it's my control Z doesn't work. So it's recording my um, my history and it, it can actually it'll go back in my history. But my keyboard shortcut doesn't work for some reason. So um, that usually only happens when I load in something and I start going on a on a sculpt, um, and my con control Z doesn't work. The quick way to do it is to um, just open up a new document real quick, uh, and then drop a a primitive in there. Hit T for edit, and then do make polymesh 3D. And that fixes the bug. So if I do this now, now my control Z works. Now I can go back over to here and my control Z will work. Right? So control Z now actually goes back in my stack here. It's a weird bug. I don't know if any of you guys get it, but every time I talk about this to anybody else, they're like, wait, what? Uh, it's one of the things I'm struggling to judge as a beginner when I'm making a model. Yeah, I mean, there's a there's a whole art, honestly, to um, deciding on what texture sets to use and or like how many and how to break up your actual model. There's a there's a whole a whole art that goes into just that. Let's see. We need to add some more details through here. Let's add some inflate. You gotta get some of these pieces up off of that. Because as as skin gets pulled, right, what it does is that skin's got to go somewhere, right, so it buckles out when it gets compressed. It has to buckle out. So it can't just be, you know, some some lines, right? Like, the, the skin actually has to buckle out. It's got to go somewhere. A lot of times people forget that 
basic physics. Yeah, man. Yeah, no problem. Um, currently working on a character for school, so this information is super useful. Thanks again. Yeah, no problem, man. Um, did I do... I think I did those on my personal streams. And I don't, I don't remember. Oh, I was thinking out loud, sorry. So I want to I want to go in and, and break up this shape a little bit. So I'm just going to kind of get a little bit of movement through here and then I'm going to go back with my inflate and just hit a couple of these little spots. So I want I want a little bit of surface breakup through here. I don't want it to just be that one large piece. Uh, Mariano, what's up, man? Uh, this channel only for showing your sculptor techniques. Uh, can you show rendering process? I never see a Pixelogic streamer using other software. It's mostly just because it's it's uh, it's the Pixelogic channel. Um, so it's kind of you know, the art, us artists that stream on here try to respect that so try not to use you know other softwares when we're streaming on the Pixelogic channel. We do every once in a while if it doesn't you know if it doesn't compete with ZBrush. Um, but a majority of what we work on, you know, is uh, is ZBrush. Um, all right, so V. The the pants are a uh, marvelous designer uh, with some sculpting on top. All the other all the other stuff is all just extractions and and sculpting um, because they're relatively simple. But yes, the uh, the pants I did in marvelous. Everything else is um, is hand sculpted. Sorry, how's this guy's face looking up here? Just want to make sure that some of this stuff is balanced, uh, but <clears throat> also different. I'm thinking this actually feels a little too flat. See how this is really nice and curved? I'm wondering if we can just do kind of a large scale inflate on this right here. So I'm also looking at the value of the shadows and the values of the highlights. So you see this shadow here is now much darker than this shadow here. That instantly tells me that it's coming out a lot further, right? So maybe I want to do a little bit less. And maybe actually this one needs to come out a little more. That's feeling pretty good. And they're different enough, right? This shape here is different slightly than this shape. And all those little um, variations come in really, really handy. So what I'm going to do, what's up Polygon Forge, how you doing? So I'm going to try to grab a little bit of this detail. We don't really see it too much in the actual reference. We see a, a little bit more here and, and sometimes it's, you can tell that, you know, this one's lit from this side coming down this way and all of this stuff is in shadow. So <clears throat> sometimes you got to take some creative decisions and say well you know in this particular one this one feels a little bit more unbalanced than this one right this one has a little bit more noise frequency going through here and even though I'm not really seeing that in here I want to make sure that the the sculpt feels good so what I want to do is I want to take some of what I've got here and actually get it over here even though it may not be in the actual reference I want to make sure that 
the end product feels correct. So I'm just going to look at both sides here and I'm going to map out. Sometimes this, this part is tough, trying to get it similar but different on the other side. Not making things weird. Maybe I'll grab something that goes there. Now, so you know, don't be afraid that if you if you if you're not really feeling it, um, it's okay to go to to other areas and work on them for a little while. So a lot of times, what happens is, you know, you're working on a little area and um, you see something else like kind of out of the corner of your eye, and you're like, oh, I need to do that, and then you kind of like jump around a little bit, even though you don't necessarily know you're doing it. It happens so much. So a lot of times I'm like, ah, I'm kind of struggling a little bit on, on this spot. You know what I'll do? Maybe I'll just I'll kind of like jump around a little bit and, um, you know, work on something that's that's close to it so I can still keep that kind of in the corner of my eye. And we can just map in some of the eyebrows here. Uh, how much time is necessary to have for a full character like this in game industry versus movie industry, considering modeling, texting, materials, etc.? Um, it's really it's 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 tough to say exactly how long, um, or even kind of roughly, because a lot of times uh, you can't take into account um, you know artistic. Um, feedback you know so your art director comes by and is like oh we we actually got to have his face completely different you know that well that adds that's adds a lot of, but if it's just um okay i need to i need to bang out this character it's usually i would say for this type of character probably a, about a month to a month and a half of full-time work um and that's so that's 40 hours a week for six weeks. I would usually, and then I break that down into say like about two weeks or so for the full high res sculpt. Um, another week for <coughs> breaking it down and, uh, <coughs> or a couple of days to, to break it down and uh, do the low res prep. And then probably another week to do um, low poly, a couple of days to do baking, um, and then another week or so for uh, materials. So usually about a, a month, month and a half, depending on if it's if it's a hero character that has uh, a lot of a lot of facial animation or like you're going to get really super close to it uh you may go two months or so maybe even longer 
depends on if you're actually doing blend shapes yourself. Um, are you having a company, uh, you know, external vendor do some do it? Uh, so, you know, is it a full head of hair? Is it you know hair and beard? Is it, um, you know, a lot of a lot of things go into it. What's up, Chimerian? How you doing, man? I'm going to try to get like this little sweeping action up towards the ends. Should give him some noise up there. To kind of complete. Oh, I haven't even showed you uh, him with a beard. Let's see if I can throw the beard on there just to see where we're at. There we go. Uh, no, we're taking a, taking a break the today from from the troll. Figured we'd switch it up just a little bit. I tried to do eyebrows. Eyebrows didn't work. Tried them again. Didn't work. <laughs> yeah, he's starting. He's starting to feel like the reference. He's starting. He's starting to kind of get that, right? The thing that we have to, you got to be careful with. So, uh, talk about concepts and um, production models. Uh, you got to be really, really careful with concepts that have a f uh, uh, an expression built in to the concept, um, because it gives a, a a big. There's a big difference between the essence of what this guy's face is and what his face is, right? You can even see that he's got a, kind of a little bit of a smirk going on. Um, if this was actual production, um, I would make sure that there are no facial expressions on him at all. I would I would make sure to take out that little smirk that he's got. Um, so, because it's personal and I'm kind of going off just this one image, uh, I'm making the creative decision to kind of add just a little bit of a smirk in there. Just a touch. Touch just a enough. You're trolling me, man. Um, so yeah, it's 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 pretty close. I feel like the the eyes are squinting a little bit more in this one, but he's getting there. He's getting there. Oh God, where'd you go? There we go. Uh, do you work faster pace with your characters while at work compared to your personal projects? Uh, yes, Michael. I'd like probably three to five times faster. At least. Mostly because usually when I'm, I'm at home, if I'm actually working, I'll, I'll stream when I'm, what I'm working. Actually, have this one too. That's a different one. It does kind of look cool with just the um, this one. Uh, the reference is um, from uh, Horizon Zero Dawn concept that uh, Adrian Adrian Pier Adrian. Let me, let me actually look it up because it's twice now that I have forgot his name. Give me one second. Adrian Wilkins. That's right. Adrian Wilkins did this guy. And I'll show you. Adrian Wilkins did him. Uh, he's got some really, really amazing work. Like super, super dope work. He's <laughs> awesome. Anyways, this is this is the one that I take it from right here. From Horizon Zero Dawn, Osirum Clan. Yep. Yeah. Oh yeah, yeah. No, no problem, man. How much time do you need to make low poly hair? Hair takes a long time to make. I I would say almost as much time as the rest of 
the body. I would I would probably well no, no, that's not true. I would say probably about half the time. It's a, but hair takes forever to do. Okay. Well let's I'll try to get into a little bit more of this area. Yeah, it doesn't hair doesn't take very long if all your characters are bald. This is true. I'm gonna make sure that I have enough large form difference between where the uh where the memory creases are so that I get shape change in here. This one I'm going to have kind of this little break up. Gonna get some some minor crease kind of going through here. Just break up some of the surface a little bit. Is there a reason why I'm working on something that's already done? Uh, you mean like something that was actually already created in a video game? So this is kind of cool if you're looking at this here. Um, overall, if you look, it's it's a line that looks like this, but you've really got these like kind of micro breakups that kind of go along this way, that make up the larger. Right, this one kind of bounces back and forth a little bit. Um, so yeah, you know, what what to pick. Um, and like how to pick your projects and that kind of stuff a lot of different reasons for um, for picking something like this for me it's more of a test um, so here's 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 the overlying issue for for character art this doesn't really apply to to other fields um, but specifically for character art, um, if you're a, a production character artist, that's kind of mostly where your time and energy and skill is in using a concept that's been given to you from a concept artist and bringing that to life, right? That's the majority of your skill. It's a majority of what you do uh, as a job. So when I started um, earlier in my career, before I started getting into um, professional work, was I made a decision in that, well, you know, do I spend time and energy trying to get good at coming up with my own concepts and my own ideas, or do I um, take something that's already existing and actually use that as practice for what I would do in a studio. So my conclusion was 
why do I want to spend a bunch of extra time coming up and practicing and being really good at coming up with concepts when I'm not going to be doing that in my job? But my job will actually be to take somebody else's concept and bring that into 3D life, right? So I was like, okay, well, you know, that's cool. That's a good idea. But what specifically, let's take that a step further and say, all right, well, what what studios do I want to work for, right? What level of detail um, do I want to portray in my own work to show that that's the work that I do and that's the work that I should be hired for, right? So I so came up with the idea of like, well, if I want to, if I want to work for Bungie, or if I want to work for um, three four three, those types of those that type of work, do go get their art book. Go get the art of Halo Five, and look at their concepts, and do one of those. Because that's those those are the exact concepts that the concept artist gave to the um, uh, to the three the character artist, and they made that in game. That's your competition. So if you can take it and make it better, there you go. Or you can take it and make your own stamp on it. Or if you take uh, in this particular case, um, this guy never actually really got used in his full format in this exact format i've never seen him in the actual game i've seen these guys but i never saw this guy i was like oh you know what that's kind of cool so if you source actual concepts from a studio that portrays the type of work that you want to do use them man practice that's i mean you're not selling this you're not making a profit from this this is all personal personal work right it's for your your own personal gain um th that's what these concepts are for for you to actually take that from the character art from the concept artist and make an actual game asset from it that's what you're going to be doing that's what that's your competition if you and then if you can make it better Awesome. End. End rant. <laughs> that's just me, though. That's... that's. Those are my conclusions. Everybody has their own opinion. But <clears throat> that's how I got to um, doing these types of things. It's like, what, what can I bring to the table that's different? Or can I even get to that table? Uh, what about the face expression? Sometimes it's hard for me to pick something because I have that in my head. Yeah, so it's important when you're when you're picking something that's already done. Like I wouldn't do Master Chief, or I would I would never do Nathan Drake. You know, like those guys are so good um, that your chance of fail is much higher. So I usually pick something that's that's um, not the main character, you know, maybe it's a, a side character or maybe it's an NPC like this particular one was. And then you just give it give it life. Give it your own spin and your own your own take on it. And see if you can get it to the same quality or better than what's actually in the game. Again, you're not using this for profit or anything, it's all just personal work that um, that you're practicing from, right? Uh, where did I learn to create characters? Well, it's, a, it's a deep question. I was working on these guys up here. I think that's okay for now.
What's up, Katrek Gore? How you doing, buddy? All right, I think we can start. Maybe, maybe we'll jump down to the lips for now. Even if it's not that good, yeah, you're getting the experience. You know what to expect and and where where your own faults are or where your own um, lack of um, skills are, right? this guy have oh yes he does sweet all right i'm gonna jump down to lips for a little bit here let me take this down and again i'm not really gonna see this down here because he's gonna be covered by a beard but I really want to make sure that the overall shapes are correct. Um, it's like it's like doing leg and arm anatomy, even though you're going to be wearing a shirt, right? You want to make sure that the base anatomy is correct before you put the dressing on it. <laughs> and try to get just a little bit more depth happening. And maybe we've got a little bit more creasing in here. Starting to come along. A long way to go still. Just going to keep trying to push some of these shapes more. See if we can get these subtle reeds down, notched up at a, an extra level here. <laughs> I say sculpt all the time, man. If you're sitting at your, at your computer um, and you're doing something or you're watching something, just sculpt in the background. It's awesome. It's, that's that's uh, that's free time. You get a little bit of shape difference between this shape going on and that one down there. So we get some nice subtle variations coming through here. Practice, 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 man. I always try to tell people that if you're if you're new, if you're trying to get to a, a good level and you're you feel a little bit intimidated by the full breadth of the project that you're trying to do or you're like, How do I do a face? It's similar to how I try to tell people to break down the body and how do you how do you study and how do you start the anatomy for the body is just start with one piece you know if you want to learn how to do faces really well start with a nose study the crap out of a nose like what what do um you know what's the shape of the the nostril you know is it a nose that is flared out sideways or is it one that's more Caucasian, that um, the nostril is more of an oval going forward? 
you know does the um the the inner part of the nostril does it pull away from the lip here or is it flat a lot of times you can actually have this where it actually pulls away from the lip that's a different nose you know um what do the um the bilateral cartilage shapes feel like you know is it is does it have a a, a bifurcation in the middle is it one large mass you know do you do you see it do you see it pull back here like this or is it relatively smooth you know does it have a kind of a deep pitted area in the back here or is it relatively smooth you know what's the bridge of the nose look like what's the navel cavity look or nasal cavity look like is it does it have you know does it come like this does it swoop in does he have a small button nose you know all those things are really super important to be able to nail um a lot you know is it is it crooked is it straight this one he's kind of going off to the side a little bit you know do, is the nasal bone uh wider than the cartilage in the middle then you get this like nice little kind of hour shape f um shape going our shape shape i word <laughs> Blind Fox, how you doing? Oh, I've been here for a while. Where have you been? <laughs> what does the inside of the nostrils look like? Right? Does this this pulls back a little bit? And where is the um the actual where does it go into the actual um sinuses? You know, like what's what's the inside of this look like? Does it does it go back this way? Or does it go back this way? You know, looking at those things and how the shapes underneath in like actually goes back in your sinuses, those are important to know too. A lot, well, mostly what happens is, <clears throat> and I actually got this um, from a lot of scans. Um, when I was at Sony San Diego, I, I worked a ton of uh, actual head scans. And more often than not, it'll actually go back here. So this may be smooth and close to the actual level of the lip. Um, but as soon as you jump into the actual inside of the nose, this goes back really quickly right there. A lot of this goes back right here. Right? And then you've got this shape. So what is this shape? Is it rounded more? Or is it flat? It's all these little things that you really got to make decisions on. That your, your initial sight may not pick up, but your unconscious mind knows. Right? So like maybe we need some more structure in here before it actually pulls in. So you get all these things working in concert, the overall feel just feels more natural because you're you're even though you're not seeing it directly, your mind's eye sees it or doesn't see it. And that's what makes things makes things weird. Right? So now like this shape in here is much different from what it is over here. So maybe this got to this has got to go in a little bit more over here. Yes. What's up, Aza? How you doing? Work. Work, work, work. And maybe this actually comes in a little bit more. You know, make sure that this has enough curvature on it. 
and you really it's it's really tough to to know all of this unless you've done it a couple of times you know what i mean or if you've studied it you know does 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 this shape have more curvature than this does you know does it is it flat when it comes in here like this or is there actually a curve on that All these things make a big difference in whether something looks correct or not. <laughs> yeah, I, that's the other thing too. Is um, I actually uh, I highly encourage people if if you're looking to do, um, you know, realistic, even if it's not realistic, but if you're doing if you're doing heads, get some scans, man. Get those scans. That's real life. There's nothing better than actually studying from real life. So if you now like. 2007 man there was no there's very few head scanners out there nothing near what we have access to now go to 3d scan store pick up <clears throat> some scans where was i two months ago <laughs> i was here homie right here um but get get some of the scans study them figure out what you know and then just when you're studying them, break it down by piece. You know, what is what do the lips look like? You know, like what 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 does the profile look like? Is the top lip further out uh than the bottom lip? You know, how how pulpy is the lip? Is it super thin here? You know, a lot of times with um with older males they lose well, with I think any kind of age, you lose the 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 plumpiness of your lip. And what happens is your lip, you, kind of this length elongates as you lose this plumpness, and you start getting like that that old man old man lip, where it just kind of goes super flat. You know, and then you know who knows? Sometimes sometimes this this outer lip actually has a little bit of curvature to it you know and that look is much different from what we just had look how much that changes him you know do you want to do somebody that's older or younger so you take some of those um, some of those changes over time and and the gravity factor into account But you got to know that from studying, right? What's this angle? <clears throat> a lot of times, this uh, a lot of people don't take into account the relationship between the cartilage of this this the underside of the nose and the lip you know does it does it come out here like this yeah, that's fine. right do we see more of that in this particular case I feel like it comes way back up a little bit too much so I'm gonna actually pull that down a little bit you know there's there's a little bit of curvature to the bottom here Let's throw a quick render. So if I'm doing something where, um, anyways, obviously in a regular render, this will all be dark in here. So I want to make sure that the places that you're sculpting that should be dark, they throw some renders and actually get some real life shading in there, right? How are those, how are those shapes looking?
Okay, how do they look from back here? He's getting there. Look at that, all that time, not in perspective. <laughs> you know, what does, um, take into a lot of counts that, you know, when you have uh, a Caucasian male, and, you know, maybe this guy has a little bit of, um, you know, maybe he's more Pacific blood in him you know maybe he's got maybe he's a little bit a touch of Samoan or something um you know what what does that type of um you know physiology uh physiology how does that how does that gain fat or lose fat you know where where do where do those things accumulate and how do they accumulate? What shapes do they give you? So many things to consider. It's crazy. Let's see if we can get just a little bit of lip de detail coming in here. So early on, what I did was um, this initially, this guy actually initially started from a scan. It's completely different now, but <clears throat> I made sure that I was able to have um, different um, polygroups so that I can, let's say I want to work on the upper lip. Upper lip, okay, or lower lip. I can really, really quickly get in there and isolate um, I will not be rigging this side because I am I am not a rigger all right so maybe Maybe we just start baking in some of this. Just so we can start getting some shapes in here. Just so we can get some of that language break up. And then we'll switch that so we get just the top. Clean this up a little bit. Then we'll start. So the upper lip has three main parts. We have the the middle part and then the two sides. So in, usually in females it's a little bit more prominent. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to give just just a touch of shape difference so we get it ever so slightly okay. 
What's up, Mars? How you doing, bud? Just a little bit of major form change between those two. Or those those three major shapes. Just something slight, nothing crazy. Makes you think that may be a little bit much. Just something slight. And then now when we go in. We can do this. So these guys come this way. And then this end up coming. So again, I'm, I probably will end up doing um, some projection on this to get it up, but I want to have just some basic shapes so that all the reeds are working correctly. The other thing too is um, you want to take into account, let's say if you know your art director is coming by, you want to be able to get the overall essence of um, of what you're trying to do rather quickly. So if you can block this stuff in really quick um, to help you sell um, easier to to an art director, it makes all the difference in the world. Like, oh yeah, it looks good. Or, no, what the hell are you thinking? <laughs> so I want a couple of a little bit more sh actual shape breakup. So I may use the the inflate. I want a, a little bit of more of structural shape difference between the meat of the lip, the corner of the lip. Right now it's kind of this shape, this kind of corner shape, and then this shape. So I want to make sure that this big shape flows right into this edge. So let's try to take a little bit of that out. And then maybe what we'll do is we'll give this just a little bit more. It's feeling pretty good. I feel like it's a little bit much happening up there. So let's try to pull just a little bit back out. So again, this is um, inflate brush is really good for this type of stuff where you want to keep the overall surface detail but you want to just shift things around a little bit. Kind of got this little weird pocket happening here. Don't really like. So I'm just going to... Make sure that that corner interaction works pretty well. Uh, your model is low poly yet so smooth. How? Um, I use a lot of, whenever I'm doing, or I get to this point on a face, uh, I always have subdivision levels. Um, 
Right now his head is four million. That's right, four million two hundred thousand. So I can move him around and it automatically goes down to the lowest subdivision level. And the lowest subdiv is four thousand. It also helps to have a good CPU. Some weird stuff going on in there. You got this kind of cool shape break between the muscles that cramp up here and the actual lip. Yeah, anytime I'm doing um, really small details, I always make sure that I, um, I'm working on subdivision levels. It really helps with the performance and it really helps with um, Just being able to, it really helps to be able to have good even topology um, to work on, even if it's this high res. Oops. Maybe we'll just crease these up a little bit more in here. So we got some nice uh, fall off between um, the radius of this curve versus it kind of feathering out this way. Okay, let's, let's do a new, I'm going to attempt to work on this guy for our, the last 10 minutes here. But what I want to do is I want to put that on a different layer so I don't mess everything up. So, and look, so what I'm looking at here is look how close his eyebrows are to that top eyelid. Maybe my eyebrows are way too small. I mean, look at that. Look how close that hair follicle is going in to his eyelid. Maybe my eyebrows are too small. Let's try it. His uh, this dude's eyebrows, crazy. They actually come. All the way down here like this. Maybe they just don't go up as high. Maybe we can get rid of these up here. So layers are good for. Actually pushes his eyebrow a lot lower. I think it it's he's just got super thick eyebrows. Let's well, don't know until you try, right? All right, maybe we'll try to give him a little bit. So right now, this this fold is pretty consistent here, and this shape is pretty consistent. So maybe we can just mix that up a little bit. You know, we'll give this a little bit of a poo, a little more poofiness out here. How 
and then it kind of maybe goes in in here. And again, I'm on a new layer, so I can try pretty much whatever I want to. It's just nice. Love layers. Layers. You know, maybe this is more out altogether out here. And then it transitions from this being out to this being in. Take some inflate. Smooth that out. Uh, I don't know if you have much thought, but why do you think realistic game concepts have become such a focus for games now? And stylized has become less prominent now. Like Wildstar. Um, honestly, I, I, uh, I don't really see that. I, I think it's becoming even more polarized, where... Either you have super realistic or super awesome stylized. You know, if you're looking like Overwatch or um, um, Fortnite, you know, those, those types of games are super, super popular. Um, uh, but then you have games like uh you know uncharted or um you know red dead redemption those types of ones that are giving me even further the other direction i th i i honestly feel it's it's close to 50 50 um but each one are are, are pushing uh further away from each other i don't feel like stylized is is taking over or or going away i feel like Let's undo a lot of that. I want to keep the eyebrows, but that shape didn't feel right. Yeah, I got to figure out what that's going to do. Maybe. Maybe this actually breaks up a little bit and then this comes like this. You know, it's, it's, you, you, you just don't know until you, until you try it, you know? I like to, I like to think of it as for every successful attempt that you have or that you, that you complete, there's about five to ten ways that you know how not to do it. <laughs> you just gotta you gotta figure them out you know maybe this is just super slight out here or maybe we go the other way and just do you know maybe this is super thinned out And then this has no, it's not working either. 
Stop on Carlos. Uh, what do you think about Titan versus Pascal? It's good for simulation and sculpting. Um, for for ZBrush, it's um, it's really 100% um, CPU. So let's say get yourself a good CPU, and um, that will make the most difference. Uh, I'm not the biggest tech guru when it comes to, to hardware, so I, I have a hard time speaking well to that point. Maybe I can break this up a little bit. It's getting there. All right. Um, I think it's the fact that we resonate with the human face more quicker than, let's say, half a dragon booty. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, I think that's going to be it for today. We got some some good work done. I feel he's getting he's getting very very close to um, being ready for just a poor pass. We have some really nice subtle. Um, shapes in here, right? So we have nice transitions from the chin to the jowls to from the fat deposits in the in the jaw to the neck. Um, I really like how the zygomatic um, fat deposits in here are working with the jaw. Feeling really good about uh, nasolabial and lip transitions. Um, nose feels pretty good. The nostrils, I feel, are still a little bit, um, still a little bit funky. Not, not finished. Uh, and then I really want to work some more on the eyelids and try to fix up this stuff that doesn't feel correct at this, at this particular time. Uh, last question is, one asks, what CPU are you using? Um, I just upgraded my CPU to a i7 8800K. It's working beautifully. Um, yeah, so we had a little break from the troll today. We did a little bit of facial sculpting. He's feeling pretty good. Feeling pretty good. Let's get that beard back on him real quick. Get the full effect. pretty good okay um that will be it for actually for this month um my wife and i are having a baby later this month so i probably won't be back for for quite a while for for a bit but i should have plenty of time to work on some actual to get some of these projects actually out the door um per se so when i do come back i May start on something new, uh, or may just be finishing up the troll. But if you would like to uh, follow me on my channel, um, the my channel is right there. It's just uh, Brennan Isaiah Bankston. Copy paste is your friend in that. Uh, so follow me on my personal channel if you'd like. Um, we'll probably be doing more baking, and I'm going to be getting into Substance Painter to actually texture this guy up. Um, yeah, you guys can see the troll real quick. Where did he go? Let me load him up real quick. Uh, if you're not following ZBrush, Pixelogic channel here on Twitch, highly suggest giving the Twitch channel a follow. Um, there's a lot of other amazing artists that um, that also stream on here. So here's the troll that I'm working on. The God of War fan art. Uh, but this one's more for... This one's for uh, collectible and statue pipeline. That's why he's all posed out and all niced. All niced up. So this is the the other guy that we've been working on for 
a bit on my on my other streams. He's still got a, a ways to go before he's done, but he's getting getting a lot closer. A lot closer. Um, so I'll be I'll be working on this guy in my personal stream as well, trying to get him kind of wrapped up, um, and then talking about uh, uh, print prep and that kind of stuff. So uh, yeah. I think that that's about it. So that'll be it for me on the Pixelogic channel for this month. But if you'd like to follow me on my personal channel, hit that follow button on my personal channel uh, and follow uh, the Pixelogic channel because there's lots of other ar amazing artists coming up. Um, I think we got some coming up later today as well. So, yeah, I hope you guys uh, had fun. I hope you guys uh, learned a thing or two. But most of all, I hope you were inspired to go make your own cool stuff. So get out there and do it. And remember that... Discipline is greater than inspiration. Don't wait to be inspired. Get out there and sculpt and draw and do art as often as you can. If you can't draw or do art, study. Study, study, study. All right. See you guys. Peace.